Good morning, good morning. Hi, Seaside. That's our very own Seaside band. And we have a special guest that's joined him this morning. That's Brandon, who's going to be uh, supporting our guest artist this morning. I uh, just wanted to say hello. Welcome you all. Thank you for tuning in. I want to start you off with a song and hope you enjoy. Rebecca, <laughs> did you write that one? I did. You did? did. Oh my goodness, there's some beautiful words there. Thank you so much. I, I, I like that. And Thanks. I want to say, hey, welcome to our viewing audience. Right. Hey, welcome to Seaside, <laughs> a thriving spiritual community, at least on the airwaves these days, and on yeah, Zoom, that's, right. that's inspiring us to live our divinity. How are we doing? Good. Yeah, yeah. I, well, hey, I heard that's you. It's a universal good. Yeah, that's I'm it. hoping for everybody. <laughs> Heard you were out last night. I was, yeah. I played, played a gig. Yeah, it's like that's like few and far between these days. So well, I was very, very hey, grateful. Yeah. Starting to hear good things. You're gigging. Matthew's got three this nice. week. Yeah, so Matthew. Th things are are coming together. Yeah. And of course, this Saturday you've got. I'm gonna do a live stream. Yeah, on my Facebook uh, once again, which is uh, Lady Rebecca Jade. So. Uh, Lady Rebecca Jade. Lady Rebecca Jade. Uh, at what one, time? One o'clock. One o'clock. Yeah. I'll be there. Yay! Yeah. Thank it, you very much. It's always fun. So. Well, speaking of things, yes. you know, happy. Uh, happy, happy anniversary to you! Yeah, You're 20, 29 years is that right? Twenty nine years 29 here at years Seaside. Here at Seaside. At Seaside. Yes. Yeah. Happy that, anniversary. That was it. I, mean, that's I still remember that day in September, and uh, it was nineteen ninety one. Just driving here and parking on the beach at, uh, at Swami's and changing my clothes, so I looked like a minister when I showed up. <laughs> nice. yeah, that was a lot of fun. Also, want to say to anybody who you know is practicing Judaism that I don't. Of happy Rosh Hashanah is the way to go. But if I had the chauffeur, I'd sound the horn and you know make the announcement. It's time to open the book and take a review of the last year, see how we 
did, if there's any places we need to like forgive and absolve ourselves or others so we can get it cleaned up so we can start the new year on a good track. So I like that. Um, the horn has sounded. Hear it, feel it. <laughs> no, it's an auspicious moment uh, this weekend uh, to do that soul work. Really, you know, life reviews are good to check in on ourselves. So Absolutely. And, and I, I trust like your singing. My words uh, help inspire people to just yeah. go a little bit deeper. I dig it. Sounds go to that good. room you were speaking about. That was yes. good. Yes, thank you so, very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. And uh, speaking, thank you very much. I want to call up uh, Reverend Debbie, um, who is truly a uh, daily partner here at Seaside with me to help move us to that deeper place in consciousness. Good to be here. Congratulations. 29 years here at Seaside, mm -hmm. Christian. We're blessed, Dr. Christian. We are. You know, um, I was thinking last week that next year is going to be our 20 years in this building. So 30 years for you, 20 years. We're having a party next year. I mean a big party. That's it. I'm setting the intention now. Oh, it's good to be here with you today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and light the candle, which represents the light, and just a reminder that the light is always shining, no matter where we are. And then I will gong the gong uh, and uh, pray us in. And, and I just want to mention to you that today is the day that our practitioners are renewing their vows. So they'll be doing that this afternoon on Zoom, uh, virtually distanced for the first time ever. We don't get to come together and love each other up, but we're knowing that that transfers through the airwaves and uh, all of our practitioners are recommitting to you into their spiritual practice, into their life as practitioner this afternoon. So with that, let us move into prayer. Knowing and feeling and sensing the one, the one power, the one presence, the one love, the one light. Knowing that that is all that there is, that there is only God expressing right here and right now as love, as light, as joy, perfection, divine right action. And I know that I am one with this source. And just as this is true for me, it's true for each one. Each one here, each one within the sound of my voice, each one on our planet is an individualized expression of the one. And I know today for this service, for this Sunday celebration, that it unfolds perfectly in divine order, that spirit moves through Dr. Christian on this anniversary of his 29 years here at Seaside in the most amazing way as our spiritual leader, our guide, divinely inspired, knowing that each individual hears exactly what it is that they need to hear today to carry them through today, tomorrow, and the days to come. Knowing that our musicians and our uh, singers are the voice of God, the hands of God, a spirit moves through them, uplifting and enlightening. It's with a sense of joy and gratitude for all that is and all that is yet to be that I just let it be.
You are a blessing. You're a blessing to us and a blessing to the world. And you are a blessing, Rebecca Jade. It's always good to be here with you. I want to do a, just a few announcements before I do a reading because it's a special uh, time this week. We are launching our certificated classes this week and Dr. Christian is teaching Foundations of Science of Mind, a course that he wrote actually and our whole movement uses and he is teaching it virtually online. And we start this week, Tuesday night, six o'clock, Dr. Christian? six o'clock register at seasidecenter.org and we will pdf you or email you a pdf of your workbook and you'll be ready to go tomorrow night and if you've already taken foundations and you're looking for a class dr christina tillotson is teaching essential earnest homes starting on thursday night so i encourage you to sign up for one or another of those Another fun thing I think that we have starting is we used to have a very large thriving business group here at Seaside and we've been blessed with a Reverend Sue Oliver who has joined our team here at Seaside and she is launching a business uh, lunch thriving business lunch brunch i think it is called it's a uh, starting in october the second and it's a monthly forum for business owners entrepreneurs and leaders who want to support each other in creating th thriving ventures in the world during these online gatherings they'll be applying science of mind principles starting with prayer ending with prayer sharing demonstrations she encourages you to bring your lunch and get on the zoom call absolutely no charge it's a group it's a time to come together to up your business using our spiritual principles so you can register for that online as well we continue to get an outpouring of such love from all of you and we're so very grateful for it we certainly miss not having you here on Sundays but I want to read just a couple things that you said because they're very uh, inspirational it's lovely to receive them to know that we're making a difference in your lives as you make one in ours from Debbie, she says, missing you guys and being at church. Hopefully we can be together soon. Stay well. Someone else writes, what a godsend you have been during the pandemic. A friend told me about you online, about your online Sunday services. I look forward each Sunday, music and message. That's from Louise. And we got a letter. Uh, it's addressed to Christian, Callie, Trevor, and our entire staff. Miss seeing you, but Zoom church is awesome. I like the addition of some congregants in the house clapping. Well, I got to tell you, it's Callie and I. We're the congregants. And sometimes our, our, our guest artists have their spouses or partners. And so, uh, and our sound men, they clap sometimes, you know. So it is just us. But it says, I would love to be there. Let us know when we can socially distance with all of you, uh, Mary and Tom. And you know what? We are looking at ways that we can come together safely. We're ready to be with you as much as you're wanting to be with us. So so your board of trustees is looking into how we might be able to do that so stay tuned stay tuned for that um, so dr christian's talk title today as i think intrigued a few people it's some dogs i've known some dogs i've known and i know we've all known some dogs literally and figuratively right but uh, literally some dogs we've known and i came across i was looking for a reading and there's so many readings about dogs making their transitions i mean there's the rainbow bridge and there's all those things but i came across a book that mary oliver wrote and she's a poet that we use a lot well, some of our ministers use uh, Mary Oliver in some of our classes. And she wrote a book that's called Dog Songs. And she's got lots of poems in it, but she has a few readings. So I'm gonna share a little reading for you from Mary Oliver. It's called Ropes. In the old days, dogs in our towns roamed freely, but the old ways have changed. One morning, a puppy arrived in our yard with a length of rope hanging from his collar. 
He played with our dogs and eventually he vanished. But the next morning, he showed up again with a different rope attached. This happened for a number of days. He appeared, he was playful and friendly and always accompanied by a chewed through rope. Just as the time we were moving to another house, which we finished up all in one evening, a day or so later on a hunch, I drove back to the old house and found him lying in the grass by our door. I put him in the car and showed him where our new house was. Do your best, I said. He stayed around for a while, then he was gone. But there he was the next morning at the new house. Rope hanging. Later that day, his owner appeared with his papers and a leash. His name is Sammy, she said, and he's yours. As Sammy grew older, he began to roam around the town and as a result began to get caught by the dog catcher. Eventually, of course, we were summoned to court, which we learned quickly was not a place in which to argue. We were told to build a fence, which we did. But it turned out that Sammy could jump a fence as well as chew through a rope. So his roaming continued, but except for the dog catcher, Sammy never got in trouble. He was friendly with all the other dogs. He made lots of friends. He would say hello to their owners. People began to call us to come and get him. And before the officers saw him, some took him into their house to hide him from the law. Once a woman on the other end of town called when I got there and she said, can you wait a few minutes? I'm making some scrambled eggs. I could tell many more stories about Sammy. They're endless but I'll just tell you the unexpected, joyful conclusion. The dog officer resigned, and the new dog catcher was a different sort. He too remembered and missed the old days. So when he found Sammy, he would simply call him into his truck and drive him home. In this way, he lived a long and happy life with many friends. This is Sammy's story, but I also think there are one or two poems in there somewhere. Maybe it's what life was like in the dear town years ago and how a lot of it miss it. Or maybe it's about the wonderful thing that may happen if you break the ropes that are holding you. And so it is. Oh yeah, that's a wonderful story to get the morning started. All right, well it is my honor to introduce our guest artist this morning. Um, he's been here once before, and I'm so glad he's here again. He's brought Brandon with him on guitar to support and be with the band as well. And let me tell you a little bit about Gil. He's an incredibly talented person. Um, he's a two-time Grand Slam poetry champion. He's a two-time Raw Artist Performer of the Year, two-time closing presenter at TEDx, and hosted it once, and he's now the creative director for TEDx San Diego. Um, he's written plays, he's written, he's been commissioned and curated shows for the Old Globe, uh, the S uh, San Diego Symphony, as well as many, many others. He has had three original plays fully produced since 2015 and two others that are commissioned in 2017 and he's working on a new piece right now. So uh, he's gonna share with you a couple original pieces that are just incredible. Please welcome my friend, Gil Soto. <laughs> Thanks for the one of you who clapped. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But I know out in the cyberwebs, you're all clapping and cheering and throwing confetti. Uh, that's the least. I'm a poet, so I'm going to imagine that in my head. And that's the narrative we're going to go with, uh, just so I can leave out of here with a smile on my face. My name is Gil Sotu. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Um, let's just start. They say, rock the vote. I say, you rock some hope. I say, you look in the mirror and say, yo, that's dope. I say, this ain't no joke. I say, you rock the boat. I say, you free the system slaves. I say, you cut the rope. I say, we all got something to give, whether you're rich or you're broke. This is food for thought. I say, please don't choke. You put your mind at a slope. They give you pills to cope. I say, love is how you know God, not just the Pope. If this world's doing you dirty, let these words be your soul. I say pick up your passion, put down your remote. I say pick up your passion, put down your remote. I say pick up your passion, put down your remote. 
We're changing things here. We're changing things here. Listen, 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 guys. Do you hear that? It's right over there. I know it's scary, but you gotta look. No, not there, right there. You see, amongst the gleaming twilight, past the amber waves of grain. No, you're looking in the wrong place. You're so silly. You're always looking in the wrong place. Listen for the drums. The drums, they tell the story of battle, of peace, of banners of blood spilt upon bloody beliefs, of pilgrims, of promises, of godlike documents with the ability to determine for decades who will be the disadvantaged and who will who will cradle comfortably in future history's hammock. I completely agree with you. I, I had no idea that the right to bear arms included pins. That something so seemingly harmless could monetize and bastardize the hearts of men. Looks in for the drums, the drums, they always tell the story. Tell me you hear that. Tell me you see that. Past the, the oak tree with the strange and dark fruit hanging from it. Go back a few hundred years past that. Do you see where that treaty lays torn on the ground right next to that sleeping buffalo? I know, what's we'll, we'll called the buffalo sleeping for right now. Listen for the drums and the songs. The songs always tell the story. There, right there, that is where they are going to build America. Listen. You feel it? Things are happening here. Listen, no, we're not invited yet, but we are coming anyway. We are marching in like a college drum line, like swans escaping the winter into the beating heart of the sunshine. And this time, we are going to keep watch. This century, we will stand century. We cannot look away. We cannot look away. This is the most important movie you will ever see. Do not walk out of the theater after the fancy special effects. Pay attention to the end credits. So who is the director? Who are the producers? Who is involved in writing the script and what were their inspirations? Who has the key grip upon your community and who are merely actors playing a role? Do you know any of this? Do not look away this time. I know that the plain text on the screen is boring. So while you're reading, listen to the score in the background. The soundtrack, the drums, the songs, the voices always tell the story. The drums, the songs, the voices always tell the story. They are saying we are here. This is the spot where the re re this is the spot where revolutions happen. If that word is too buzz for you, let's just call it a, a renovation. This is the spot where the second great American renovation happens. It doesn't look like the picture we all envisioned, but this is the spot where work begins. The drums, the songs, the art, the voices always tell the story. It is the time, it is time. Pull out whatever is your God-given instrument and sing. Come on. I want you to feel that spirit. We gonna pick it up a little bit, come on. This is the drums, marching into a new era, a new era of love, a new era of acceptance, a new era of equality. We will not look away this time. We will not look away this time. It is time to be. You can be part of the problem, a part of the solution. It's your choice. If you change your thinking, you will change your life. Come on. If you agree with me, put your hand in the air, make a pledge, you will be dedicated to love, you will be dedicated to peace, you will be dedicated to joy, we cannot look away, we cannot look away, don't look away, we're building America right now. Thank you. Hey, yeah, that was amazing. That is an anthem that needs to be sung and heard. And a brand in there just laying down on those licks with the, oh, it was just amazing, amazing, amazing. That is, uh, you guys at home, just take that piece and share it with the world. That is so good. I could imagine Seaside filled with people on our feet just going with that. that, that. Thank you, Gil. That was just, woo. 
What spirit, what heart, what soul? What, oh, I love it, I love it. Okay, so I, I have had a lot of fun this week with hearing from people about the title of this morning's message, Some Dogs I've Known. Have you known some dogs in your day? Well, I'll tell you, um, this particular message was inspired, or at least the title was inspired by a mentor of mine a long time ago in the early 80s, the president of this movement, was a man by the name of Dr. Fred Boat, and he did this talk at a summer conference at a Silomar uh, State Beach called Some Dogs I've Known, and he talked about the qualities these dogs uh, exemplified for him, and I can't tell you what those qualities were and what those dogs were, but it stirred in me a remembrance that I've known some dogs. And uh, those dogs have carried some qualities that are divine. And as we all know, you know, dog spelled backward is God. And, um, you know, in the like, Eastern philosophies, they have a lot of gods exemplifying a lot of the different qualities of the one God. And so the first dog I knew was the one that was in the house when I was born. It was actually my dad's dog. He had that dog before me, you know. And I guess there was life before I came into this world. But um, this dog was kind of like Sammy that Reverend Debbie was reading about. This dog exemplified the spirit of a, of a free spirit. Uh, uh, just an unbridled expression of life. It was a time when the dogs were able to run through the neighborhood and we would get a call from the butcher shop said, Hey, would you come get Bagel out of here? See, Bagel was a beagle. And he was a big beagle because he was half coyote, or at least that was the story that came with him. Whether it was true or not, I always assumed it was, but whether it was or not, that was the kind of story that was told about uh, Bagel, the beagle, who was half coyote, who roamed the neighborhood, who at night could be heard throughout the neighborhood howling at the moon, and the stories around him were legendary, and that's what these wild spirits are. They are, um, th they live life in ways that are grand and glorious, and they get in trouble sometimes. That's what happens when you are a rebel. You kind of cross over the boundaries, and those who like it a certain way kind of want to put you behind bars, and that's what would happen to Bagel. Well, at least once a year, we'd find him in the pound, behind bars, you know, waiting for us to pick him up, and we would take him home. And my dad built the fence, just like Sammy, and Bagel, if he couldn't climb over it, he learned to dig under it, which meant there were a lot of rocks around the bottom of our fence. And Bagel, he enjoyed uh, just sleeping in the street. You know, the cement was warm and he could just luxuriate and the cars would come and they would honk at him and if he would get up he would meander over to the neighbor's ivy and roll around in that until he got comfortable and went back to sleep but he also liked chasing motorcycles he thought that was a fun thing now if you rode a motorcycle being chased by a half coyote is probably not the most fun idea so my dad gave the guys in the neighborhood who rode motorcycles squirt guns with lemon juice and told them just squirt him and they'd be driving down the street with their squirt guns it was just it was crazy until Bagel decided to chase a police officer on the motorcycle. And this patrolman came walking to our front door and knocked on that door and said, you better, you know, get that dog put away or you're going to lose this house. And uh, all sorts of other threats he could. And so at that point, Bagel was put on a chain. But, you know, that free spirit couldn't be chained. You know, he came into this world as a non-compliant expression of life. And these free spirits, they are just really, they, they don't, just if he would only do as I would tell him to do, we wouldn't have to lock him up. But that's not who he is. He was not a complacent and compliant animal. He was a free spirit. And Albert Camus, um, you know, French author, um, he, he wrote uh, for the French Revolution during uh, World War II, won the Nobel Prize for Literature, he, he talked that if you are living in an unfree world, the best thing you can do is be absolutely free so your very existence is an expression of rebellion. You know, and Bagel was that. He, he was a fighter. He was a scrapper. He didn't, you know, shy away from fights, and he looked like it. His ears were torn and shredded. He had teeth he had lost from bones. His tail was chomped. He was scarred up. He was a pirate. He, he looked that part. He did not shy away from a good fight, and uh, the other dogs in the neighborhood knew that. And he didn't care what he looked like. He didn't care what, uh, you know, what they said on his 
his Facebook, if they had a Facebook. He didn't care what people thought about him. He lived in a spirit, and my dad eventually had to put him on a chain, as I, I was saying, but he knew he didn't come into this world chained up or on a leash or muzzled, you know, having to wear that mask, or, or he knew he was going to leave this world untethered. And so my dad would honor Bagel by letting him off on the weekends, and Bagel would take off. And he would come back on Sunday nights. He knew it would be time to be incarcerated again at home, which I guess was better than, you know, behind real bars. But th there was an understanding, and he continued to build stories. My mom at the PTA meetings would hear about, from the other moms, about this uh, beagle that would come in through the dog door and eat their dog's food. And uh, this was the kind of spirit he was, and I I'm sure still is. And when he was 17 years old, you know, his legs filled with arthritis, no longer had teeth from eating, you know, bones and meats and, and all those things. He was off on one of his um, weekend uh, breaks, and um, he got into a fight with a German shepherd. And the observers say that German shepherd just took this big old beagle with no teeth by the neck and threw him, and that was the end of Bagel the beagle. But it was interesting how everybody who knew Bagel, which were a lot of people that knew Bagel, um, they said, of course, that was the way that spirit was to go. You know, Callie and I saw a movie this summer called Legends of the Fall with Brad Pitt, who had this wild spirit, and he would sometimes just, that free spirit in him would just have him run away. But he always came home because he knew where home was. Bagel would take off, but he would always come home because he knew where he lived, he knew where he came from, he knew uh, that's where his family was. And when Brad Pitt died in the movie by a grizzly bear at a ripe old age, they said, that was a good death. Well, Bagel, who exemplified the quality of spirit of freedom, which Ernest Holmes, I'd say, adores, because he used that word five or six times on the very first page of the Science of Mind textbook, freedom, is an important quality of God. And so when I think of some dogs I know, Bagel was there when I came into this world, and uh, he, he taught me the importance of being a free spirit. You know, to not allow your soul to be chained up or muzzled or, you know, but sometimes it's important to be non-compliant, to be that expression that is in your soul. Because those uh, of, so many of us have this gypsy spirit, but we have been so indoctrinated to behave ourselves, there's like a yearning when we hear of those gypsy, free-spirited individuals who are out there riding their hog or, or creating all sorts of wonders in the world because we're so busy behaving ourselves and doing it right. Now, the other dog that came to mind was Shep. Shep came into my life when I was 11 years old. And uh, I, I was walking down Chandler Boulevard in North Hollywood. And here came this little five, six-week-old German Shepherd, one ear down, one ear up, big bushy tail, and just decided I was going to be her guy and just followed me down the street. And I was like, I'm 11. I'm thinking, this is kind of cool. You know, hey, Mom, Dad, can I keep this dog? And... They then used that as one of those parental teaching moments. You know, you know about responsibility. You know you're going to have to feed this animal. You're going to have to clean it up every day. And you know how that goes. And you need to go door to door and make sure this dog doesn't belong to anybody. But sure enough. And Shep became just the epitome of loyal. She was a German shepherd that never got beyond the miniature size. She never got beyond maybe knee high, 35 pounds. But she was all... German Shepherd. She was as loyal as they came. And, you know, I learned about loyalty from her, and that's really the quality I'm thinking about. You know, loyalty, you know, uh, or trust, you know, takes some time to build, and you can lose it in a second, and it takes forever to get it back. And she was loyal. The Bible, uh, 17th Proverb, verse 17, it says, uh, loyalty is unwavering in good and in bad. That's what loyalty is. It's unwavering in the good times and the bad times. I believe. I'm on board. I'm with you. I am going with it. You know, count me in. 
You know, that loyalty, she uh, was just, um, she would guard me. She'd guard her space. I mean, anybody that came into her space, it had to pass, had to pass her. And it wasn't like a free pass. You came into Shep's space, she would check you out. And if she didn't like you, oh, you would know it. I mean, and now if it was just her and I wasn't around and she didn't like you, you know, she would just kind of move on. If she liked you, you're, you're, you're on the in club. If you didn't, you're on the out club. If it was another dog she liked, she'd play. If you didn't like that dog, they would move their separate way. I mean, I actually had people tell me that when their relationship didn't work out, that they wish they would have just sniffed that person a little bit more before they took home something that stinks <laughs> so much. But the, the thing about um, her is it didn't matter what others. She listened to something inside of her that, that kept her loyal. And I couldn't help but to uh, think of uh, uh, Ruth Ginsburg. Uh, this week, I mean, who made her transition, bless her heart. I mean, we've, we've watched many Supreme Court justices you know, tenure out of their position, move on, and, and it's always top headlines. But I never remember such an outpouring of heart and love for a Supreme Court justice as uh, uh, Ruth Ginsburg had. And she was known for her bold dissension. She would take a bold stand, and not everybody was on that, but she was loyal and committed to that something that is inside of her. She knew that was a truth that she had to stand for, and people appreciated that. They knew where she stood. And she said that don't be afraid, you know, to speak out for what it is you believe and lead others in joining you. Don't be afraid to speak out for what it is you believe and lead others in, in joining that. For um, she would talk about to, to create um, a change, an enduring change. It's one step at a time. And at an early age, in the 50s, when her husband was in, in the military, and I think it was uh, o Oklahoma, and she ran into segregation back then, she knew that was wrong, that it was not correct. And she became a crusader for the inequities. She remained loyal to knowing that we were all created equal. And she was willing to speak out uh, about the racial inequities. She was willing to speak out uh, about the, for feminine rights. She said that, you know, the women will not be equal until the men allow them to help raise that next generation. And that next generation that brings in that sense of the feminine uh, power, the sense of the nurturing and the caring, because the patriarchal, um, you know, guidance of the next generation you know, has to do with dominance. It, it has to do with, with exploiting what is going on. It has to do with violence. You know, what we need to bring in is that, that feminine power, is that softer something, and to be loyal to the recognition that God is um, um, masculine and feminine. And so Shep, for me, represented this wonderful expression of loyalty to the very end. I, I can remember um, I, when I had moved out of the house. It was the early 80s. And I was leading the spiritual community uh, up in Ventura as their spiritual leader. Parents called and said, you need to come and check on Shep. I don't know how much longer she's going to be around. And so I remember driving back to our house of Hesby, on Hesby Street that my parents lived for 40 years. And... Um, and I saw her, and she wasn't well. And I, I realized there was going to be a decision that was going to have to be made. I mean, how could I do this? I, I remember being 11 years old, this little puppy following me home. And now, you know, gosh, more than a decade later, she's at that transition point. I remember praying that night. And I got a call the next morning saying, Shep made her transition. And I thought, you talk about loyal to the very end. She made that decision for me, rather, th th keeping me from having to go in and make, tell a doctor, okay, you know, help her. She made the decision. It's crazy. That kind of connection and loyalty and love. Another one of the dogs I knew was Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight was an all-white dog with a pink nose. He was scruffy, he was ugly, and he was as cute as could be. He um, came into our world. You know, my dad had Bagel, I had Shep, 
and my younger brother didn't have a dog, wanted a dog, and my parents were very clear they didn't want another dog, and what I knew as a big brother was the best thing to do is not ask my parents to get my brother a dog, that it was the big brother thing to do. And so I made arrangements, because there was this puppy that was born, to be able to bring him home to our annual Christmas Eve party in front of all the family and friends, give my little brother his new puppy dog. Well, I got to tell you, there's not much my parents could do about that, <clears throat> except my dad then would say, son, we've got to talk about this. You know, and that was like his, his way of, uh, you know, de dealing with me. And then he'd come a couple of days, uh, I know we haven't talked about this yet, but we're going to have to talk about it. And so this would just like stir in, in my soul, you know, for days. I, I'm a Pisces, so I'm like this sensitive guy. I ain't a guy, you look at me wrong, and I'm devastated. And my dad is going to talk to me about what I did. Man, it was such a loving thing. But by that time, Cappy had won his way into everybody's heart. Things were, were good. And if there was a quality about Cappy, he, he was chill. And this dog was just a sense of peace. He was mellow. I mean, it could be because my brother got him high all the time that he just was always out of it. But he was just a sense of peace. And, and it's not that he couldn't get up and get, do something. I mean, you know, Shep would kind of boss him around. She was the boss, but he was bigger and stronger. And if she wanted his food and he didn't want to share it, boy, it would be a quick argument and he would win. You know, she would be out in the neighborhood and she would like stir that big German shepherd into attack mode. And then Cappy, who was bigger, he was, you know, bigger than Shep, 45 pounds. He'd have to come break into this fight and deal with the fight that she started. So he could raise forth the, the strength that was within him, but it came from a place of peace. You know, uh, Chadwick Boseman, you know, Black Panther, he said that superhero movies are only as great as the villain. Yeah. Only as great as the villain. You know, th that's the thing. You had this great villain, and Cappy could, from this peaceful, deep sense, just raise the strength out of himself that would surprise all of us. Otherwise, he was just happy to lay around. He was fine sleeping on my bed at night after I fell asleep. He would come in and get in bed, and he'd stay sleeping until everybody else was awake in the house, and then he would get up, walk around. Hey, what's going on around here? He was, um, you know, he, 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 was, he was like, um, he was a Buddhist, if you would. He found inner peace. It wasn't based on what was happening in the environment. There could be crazy, Shep could be barking, Bagel could be getting in trouble, and he would just kind of be all, he was single focused though. I mean, if he got his mind set on something like a ball, you know, you talk about the Zen, the mantra, the single focused mind, and he, you couldn't hide that ball. He'd put it behind his back, he'd follow you, would slip in your pocket, you'd throw it, draw, he was on it. He was fully present, and that's maybe why he was just comfortable with who he was and, and, and his body. He was tired. He'd find a sunbeam and go to sleep, and when he was no longer tired, he would get up and meander on, see what's going on. He was hungry. He'd eat. Um, you pet him. He wouldn't move. He'd stay there and start groaning in ecstasy, actually lay down his back and let you scratch his tummy and his stomach. He was just... Um, good with what was going on. And he was definitely into moving, you know, when, when it was time to get moving. And he did his yoga. He'd stretch like a cat. And so Cappy was this dog of just total peace and serenity. And no matter what was going on, he was just, he was good, but he could raise the energy. And what I learned about the quality of God around peace is that it's being able to be at peace and not being aggravated. I mean, I never saw him getting upset at, and yelling at, at Fox News or MSNBC. He never worried about mortgage interest. He was just okay with what is and could rise to the place of power if he needed to do that. But if he didn't need to do that, you know, why bother? It's like, it's okay. So I had Bagel teach me about the free spirit, and Shep teach me about loyalty, and Cappy teach me about peace. And the last dog I want to share with you that I remember was Callie's and my beloved Sage. Sage came into this world on a love beam. He was this full-size, 
pound golden retriever, gorgeous, love. I mean, he just loved anybody up who was around. If you were a burglar, he'd say, hey, let me show you where the good stuff is. You know, we, we always kind of worked on that. We never quite got him out of that mode. But he came into this world. We were living in Del Mar, and everybody in Del Mar had golden retrievers. That just seemed to be the dog of Del Mar. And our next door neighbor had this beautiful uh, pedigree golden that he'd sire out. And one day he said, hey, we got a litter coming in, and I got the first pick. Why, you want it? You know, we could have the father and the son living next door. And uh, I said, that sounds great. You know, here I am. I haven't had a dog. I would like a dog. My dogs are long gone at this point. And I'm like, hey, Callie, guess what? We can have a gold retriever next door. And she said, no. It's like, now, what would any good, strong man do when his wife says no? He turns into a pouting little boy wanting a puppy. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. But unbeknownst to me, he also became a learning experience for Callie because Callie felt that she lost all the animals that she loved and wasn't really ready to open her heart. But when she saw me, when she listened to herself, I can remember the day. It was our anniversary in 97. We took our plane. I flew her to Sedona. Uh, that, and that evening, she gave me a package, and I opened it up. And inside that package was a picture of Sage, our dog, that said, Happy Anniversary. He'll be waiting for you, us when we get home. And Sage became our kid for three years until Trevor came in that world. And, and he was a great dog for a kid. You know, he, he, I can remember holding the milk bottle for Trevor. You know, and Trevor pulling on his ears, on his hair, and he never yelped. Trevor, you would actually ride him, you know, like, like a horse. You know, just, and our cat would just pounce on him and wrestle him. Sometimes he'd get up and try to shake the cat off his head because it was all wrapped. His, his personality was absolute gold. He was about love. He was about the caring. He was about compassion. You know, Mother Teresa said, let the smile be the first thing you do because that is the beginning of love. When you see somebody, let a smile be the first thing you do because that is the beginning of love. You know, and so don't allow your face to be muzzled, but rather what you want to do is to lead with the smile because what Sage taught me about love is that he led with the smile. His tail would be wiggling from one side to the other. As a little puppy, he was so excited to see you, he couldn't even literally contain himself. And it didn't matter how long you've been gone, if you're gone for an hour, whether you're gone for a day or for a week, he was excited that you were home. He, um, I, I think I've shared this before, but he, he never would sit back on his haunches, cross his arms and say, okay, Christian, been gone a while. Is, is there something you want to tell me? Is there something you're not telling me? Do we need to talk about your commitment to this relationship? Nah, none of that. He was not into guilt. He was into love. And if I came home in pain, he would come over and say, you'll feel better. Just rub me. <laughs> rub me, you know? And he put his head on my lap, <clears throat> and he, he kind of pushed his head. Finally, you know, he'd start rubbing, and he'd kind of crawl up onto the couch and then onto your lap, because he always thought he was a lap dog, but he never got it that he wasn't. But the next thing you know, he's just... He's loving you up, and you're melting, and you're dissolving into the love that is unconditional. You know, Robert Frost said that, uh, no, I don't know if I'm going to get it for you. Um, desire, absolutely, yeah, maybe I'll come in a moment. It was pretty good. It was about um, love is uh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, well, maybe we'll put it out in my writing this week or something. It's, it's kind of good. Um, but the, the thing with Sage is um, he, he didn't hold on to resentment. He didn't say, you were mean to me. Let me process this for a while and see what did you really mean by yelling at me or, or saying something. You know, he didn't lie awake concerned about the existential expression of life you know, he wasn't about, should I be here now? He knew he was here, and that's all that mattered. He was in the present moment. He was this expression of love, and he knew no matter what was going on, it come from love. Martin Luther King said that, um, I'll come from love. Hate is too big of a burden to bear. You know, I'm going to come from love. You know, it's, it's just, hate's too big of a burden to bear. 
We were reading an article in the men's group yesterday that Ernest Holmes wrote. It's in this month's Science of Mind magazine, September. It's called The Contagion of Fear. And it, it's about how people are creating their life from a place of fear. And James Kaplan, you know, our corporate pilot who sat right here in the front row while we were getting together forever if he was in town, he, he was talking about these fears from what is coming from and what could come from and all these different possibilities when you take the fear scenario and he just said, finally, I came to this affirmation, screw it, I'm coming from love. No matter what it is, just screw it, I'm coming from love. You know, if I could come from love, and if I could come from a place of peace, you know, I am peace, I live in peace, I bring peace, I am love, I live in love, I, I bring love. Could you imagine what a shift would be going on within this world and within this life? There is something that is seeking to express itself through you, and it is love, it is peace, and when we can be just loyal to, to that, that presence. You know, Jesus you know, told us, um, not Jesus, actually, I guess it'd be God told us. You know, we find in Exodus 20, chapter, verse 3, the first commandment, you shall have no other God before me. You know, that, that's pretty clear in terms of loyalty. If I can have no other God, and Jesus said, um, in all your ways. And they said, hey, Jesus, which is the most important commandment? He said, that one. He said, in all your ways, what you want to do is um, acknowledge that spirit. In all your ways, you know, have spirit within your heart, within your mind, within your soul. The first of the spirit, soul, and body. In all your ways, honor that spirit with all your, your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Spirit, soul, and body. I am in that absolute alignment, that love energy, that love place. Uh, Jesus said, a new commandment I bring you. Yeah. To love one another as I have loved you. So if we could love one another, spirit has loved us as God has loved us. If that's what we could bring to the equation of this world, no matter what is going on, remain at peace and just loyal to that and be a free spirit enough. Well, this is the way I'm supposed to be behaving. No, I'm not going to be compliant. I'm going to be uh, defiant if I would. I would be a bold descent to the status quo because there's something not right here, and it is love that needs to express itself because we are in a time in our world that, um, that, that I don't think has really been around since the Civil War. There is a sense that is going on here that uh, there is a division uh, that is being brought to us, whether it's the COVID and how we're supposed to respond to that, how people are, are policing one another, whether it is um, the, the racial inequality, uh, the financial concerns, um, the political tension. There is something I, I don't, we've got to, like Ginsburg says, one step at a time to bring about change and enduring change. We've got to see that even if it was back in the 50s, continue to work in that direction. Even if right now there's something that that's not right, there's a division, but what's gonna heal that schism? Love, as long as there is a place within my mind and my thinking for humanhood, and humanhood is a belief that there could be something other than God, I've put something before me and God, that first commandment I'm violating, when there is some humanhood of believing in good and evil, then all of a sudden it's going to outpicture in the experience. I have got to return back to that place of total love and be at peace with that, and not riled by what's going on on the outside, but to find that peace within, be loyal to that and have a free enough spirit and say, this is where I'm going to take a stand. Though I am being fed to be like this and to act like this, I'm going to be that rebellion with a, a re, uh, rebel with a cause. I'm going to be that person that says, you know what, I have come to the world for a time such as this. And what I know is if I'm willing to be a free enough spirit and not get caught up in the hoopla of the times of what is going on and be loyal to knowing that there is nothing before me other than God and that I'm going to be loyal to that and be at peace with that in my being, even when it's not looking peaceful outside, but there's something inside of me that's going to raise to a great, the great villain of division that is going on within our world at this time, and I'm going to stand strong and come from a place of love where I will find is this division beginning to come back together and fusing uh, itself once again into the wholeness and the totality and the humanhood that has created that will dissolve back into the nothingness because I am taking some lessons from dogs I have known. This free spirit Spirit, and loyal to that infinite, a deep sense of peace no matter what is going on to bring about the love for which I have been called to this world at this time to do. God bless us as we learn from those prophets in our world with four legs. God bless you. Mm.
Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Gil back to the stage with Brandon. What a wonderful message. What a wonderful message. Uh, makes me miss my dogs, the two that I had. I have some sad stories about them too. And you know what's funny? We have a lot in common. Um, uh, I'm a Pisces as well, and I'm from Oxnard. Oh, man. There you go. Uh, so I was listening to this interview the other day, and uh, the actor said, you could play the, in the instrumental of this. Uh, well, I was listening to an actor the other day, and he was saying that uh, someone told him, they were thinking about their life, and they're like, you know what? Uh, you better be careful because you only have like 20 summers left and, and that that hit me you know like how many summers do I have left and and uh, as the pastor was saying you know living through love living through through peace you know when when you know that you have a, a finite amount of time left on earth you really don't have no time to to, to live in hate you know, uh, it, when you know you have this finite time, you, you know that every moment is precious. So I wrote this uh, future letter to myself, and this is what came out. To try to think about my future. This is called the future. My mama's always worried about my future. About my future about my hey my mama's always worried about my future about my future about my hey so I'm gonna live 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 I'm gonna live 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 I'm gonna live till I got no more summers left hey I'm gonna I'm on a live, live, live. I'm on a live till I got no more summers left. Listen. Dear future self, thank God you are still handsome. <laughs> I imagine you often and pray that part of you is not microchip yet. Promise me the years have not taught you any of its bad habits. It's been known to erode away the special off of anything, but I know that you are a fighter. I know that your mother is part sky, will lay down for no one, and is that her clouds that pump proud through your blood. I pray smiles still come easily to you like falling asleep in rocking chairs or high school history class. The windows to the future are covered with blinds. Now you could choose to only see the darkness in the darkness in front of you or be thankful for the thin light that escapes in between them. It is unclear exactly how we will end up. As of right now, I'm putting my faith in love, but as we know that love is made of a liquid substance and sometimes it's so hard to grasp with bare hands, barely breathing. Sometimes things get so hard, it feels like I am barely breathing. But I push on blindly so that I can meet you, the future me. I'm afraid of what I will find. However, Courage is not the absence of fear, it is moving on despite it. So tonight, we move on bravely despite boundaries and borders, trusting our future selves will find joy in our good decisions and valuable lessons in our bad ones. I'm always worried about my children's future. If you're at home, you can snap about their future, about their, hey. I'm always worried about my children's future. About their future, about their hey. So I'ma teach them how to live, live, live. I'm gonna let them live, live, live. I'm gonna have them live till we got no more summers left. Hey, teach them how to live, 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 live. Teach them how to live, live, live. Teach them how to live till we got no more summers left. Listen. Tomorrow could be a dangerous word for the poor Ran about, do everybody wanting more Sports dreams and street fiends looking to score Struggle out the gate, devil at the door Jesus on the wall, hope in our stomach The American dreams within our reach If we want it, huh? So you say Hard to find tomorrow, can't live past today Hey, so we try 
running out the dark, walking into the light. Hey, listen, check my flow. I shine so bright, the sun just went home. Hey, nah, check your flow. Shine so bright, the sun gotta go home. Hey, everybody glow, shine so bright. Hey, I'm always worried about my people's future, about your future. About your That's why we gather here. Uh, we're always worried about our people's future. About your future. Let's pick it up. About your Hey, come on. So we gonna live. Huh. Hey, we gonna live. Hey, we gonna live like we got no more summers left. If you behind the screen right now, I want you to do your victory dance because you made it past Corona. You made it past protests. You made it past all what's going on politically to live in this moment. You are living in this moment. And that is the most beautiful thing that you could ever give this world. Now give back. Give back the love. Give back the peace. Hey, come on. We're going to live. Grab your hands. About my people's future, about your future, about your hey. You see, I'm up here. I'm always worried about what's gonna happen in the future, about the future. But the important thing right now is we gotta live, live, live. Every day we gotta live, live, live. We gotta live. Like we got no more summers left. Last time, we gonna live, live, live. We gonna live, live, live. We gonna live, ladies and gentlemen, like we got no more summers left. Oh, Gil, man, you got some good words there. <laughs> A lot of them. Hey, I can't wait to see one of your produced plays. Man, that's, you got th that's, that'll be exciting. What power to your message. Uh, thank you. Brandon, thank you for backing them up. That was good. The future, that's good. Wow, you know, it just it had me thinking about my dog Sage more. You know, he, he didn't care about the future. He lived for the moment, and he was an expression of love. And what I noticed about love is a lot of times there's some rascalness in that expression of love. doesn't mean they are just this perfect expression. Well, I was just thinking about it. He lived for the moment, not the future, and he loved to steal Callie's shoe. Only one shoe. Never knew what shoe or what set, but we would find it out in the yard, under the bushes. He just thought it was great to go hide her shoe somewhere. And, um, and that was if, if he wasn't, like, stealing the food, too. I mean, that, that, was, that was not open. He was a big dog. Any food on the counter he assumed was his to enjoy. And we'd have a party, and we'd have the pate out, and, and nobody talked about the pates because he snuck it out when we weren't looking and, and enjoyed that. And so um, crazy dog. One time he stole a whole pan of brownies. He never got the memo that chocolate is bad for dogs. He came back looking for more. It's like there's no guilt. You know, that, that's what living in the now moment. You know, he listens. So, and, oh, God, I could keep going, but I'm going to stop because uh, we've used the time. Your music was beautiful, powerful. Thank you, guys. Um, hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to give our love, to share our support, and... Um, it's been a wonderful week, solid outpouring of financial support for Seaside, and my heart goes out in appreciation to everyone. Um, you know, it's, um, it's tough being here just on our own. I mean, we know all of you are there, and it's, it's wonderful, but we, we move through um, this time and space doing our best to keep things going here in the life of Seaside, and the classes are starting up, and the groups are going. Um, but it still takes the financial support. And we stop just like when we were meeting in person and say, hey, this is a time it's necessary uh, to be a recipient to your loving support in a financial way so the community can continue into the future. Though it's, you know, we, we take care of today and those that are here, we care about what is here. But as we give, it comes back. 
And that's the way it works, that is the law of circulation. You know, it's an extension of your consciousness, and the level in which you play is the level in which life shows up for you. And so to be able to give without the strings attached, but rather just a consciousness and supporting spirit's good, what you'll find is spirit's good showing up as your life. That's the way it works. And so when you can remember to put spirit first, what you'll find is spirit shows up first, and that's how you're able to remain at peace. That's how you're able to come from a place of love rather than fear. Spirit comes first in your actions, and what reciprocates is a reflection of that. So as you give, it comes back. And so this is a time I pause every week and say, hey, the button's on your screen, press them. You know, the donate now button that you, you're going to see in a moment if it's not there, or, or the Venmo, which I still don't know what it is, but I guess that is one of the ways, and, and text to tithe, and there's, there's just so many, as well as people, you know, the checks, fill that out this week. Just say, hey, I love this community. Count me in. I'm still part of the family. Send a letter. We might read it here on a Sunday morning. I guess I spend a lot excess time on it these days because it's very important, and, and we're walking right on an edge, and every little bit helps. So with that, I want to share a prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that this truly is a blessed moment where the divine unfolds its expression through each and every one of us. We become that abundant divine vortex of God's good and grace, and so the motion of spirit finds expression in our lives that are relevant and real. And we find a sense of peace knowing that our source is not something outside, but that it comes from within, and that I live with this sense of peace and security and abundance that outpictures in a multiple avenues of sourcing as my life so I can continue to share that light and that love and expression of God. So with joy, I appreciate with the love that has been shared with me now, and I share that now and find that this light goes out and touches and blesses so many others. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this moment of realizing that my source is not dependent on what's going on in this world, but rather the conscious alignment with the infinite that is within me. So with joy, I support this spiritual truth. And so it is. Amen. And together, let us say this affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. getting so into that. I was ready to go all morning. Thank you guys so much. We, we got a wonderful band. We have got Bob Mathis, who's been around here about as long as I have. And, uh, and then we got Max on the Paul Lloyd Warden Busendorfer. We got Paul there on those skins. Haley back there on that bass. And we got Brandon here sitting in with that guitar. A good sound here. And Gil, thank you so much for me. You just, those songs, powerful messages for us. It, it is a ministry unto itself. And, and Rebecca, always a joy to share Sunday mornings with you. I'm glad next Saturday you've got your live performance at one. Uh, Lady Rebecca Jade on your Facebook page. That's good. Hey, and classes are starting this week. And you're, several of your singers are joining the Tuesday night class. First time ever at Zoom, and I know they're always busy. So on Tuesday nights, Chris is going to be there. Danielle's going to be there. Rain's going to be there. It's going to be a, a singing kind of class. It, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, I love that our singers carry that consciousness of spirit in what it is they do. That's beautiful. So you're doing wonderful work with your uh, musical and artistic ministry. So thank you. We're blessed by you. Guys, giving us sound today. Thank you very much. We got Matthew behind uh, the soundboard. We've got Tim behind one of the cameras. We got Edwin behind another camera. And in the uh, sound switching room today is we have got Steve who's soloing it because our other guy Tom Schroller is off racing his Porsche out, out at Quellcom Race with something they set up in the parking lot. So. Um, it, it, it takes a lot to make Sundays happen, and so my heart goes out to this team that's been here week after week. And, and of course, Reverend Debbie, my cohort, and my daily partner around here at Seaside, it's, uh, it's, it's great. So, hey, I want, um, I want to pray. Since the whole morning leads to this moment of prayer, 
I want us to know when I'm done praying that there's practitioners live waiting for you. Call in, go to the Zoom room, go to our, our, um, our website and just hit the prayer room and you will have a private session and a private Zoom room with your private practitioner. So if you're looking for prayer, and I just want to honor the practitioners today. They are renewing their vows of uh, commitment and dedication to this community as well as the organization. Once a year they do it publicly in front of everybody where they stand up here, but uh, this year we're doing it in a private uh, session with them. So I share this prayer. <clears throat> hmm. I feel now not worried about the future, not filled with the contagion of fear as Ernest talks about. Not trying to overcome anything. I just choose to stand as James Kaplan said, screw it, I come from love. I'm coming from a place of love in this moment and I can feel the power and the presence that birthed this expression into form. That is the truth of who I am. I am sired by the divine. I am God making manifest. And so I allow myself to resonate in this unified field of love and peace and joy. I am loyal. I am courageously, freely committed to being an expression of the presence of God. I'm no longer manipulated to the verdicts, the prognosis, the headlines of the mass consciousness. I'm no longer compliant with this is the way it is supposed to be. I listen. I am loyal to my unique connection with the infinite, the heart and depth of my soul and my spirit. I feel this resonance inside my being. And I choose to be bold in my dissension from the norm to honor the magnificence of the infinite in expression in this life. For if we keep on doing what we've been doing, we're gonna keep getting what we're getting. It takes some courageous individual, wild spirits, who are not cared about what the media, Facebook is saying, but knowing that if I am ragged and, and worn, I'm still going forth and being dedicated to bringing forth this presence in this life because I'm coming from a depth of peace. I'm coming from a place of love. And it doesn't mean that there is not a power that is within me. There is a power that raises itself, as Chadwick Boseman said, to the, to the greatness of a villain, of the challenge, of the difficulty, of the problem, of the issue. Call it what you will, but there's something that's calling for the greatness of our being that has yet to be expressed. That means we have got to step into that greater expression of ourself, and you'll find it with the passion of love. And when you hit that resonance, you'll find a deep peace that this is it. You won't shy away from a fight you're willing to stand strong and say, this is what I believe. I'm not worried about the future with what it may look like. I am here now in this moment. And it is in this kind of clarity of being that spirit rushes in. Spirit rushes in, purges out anything like itself. I don't need to say, hey, God, heal. The spirit moves in. There is nothing else that can remain. There is no longer that sense of humanhood. What remains is the expression of the divine that parts the sea, that heals the rift within the family. It realigns organization. The dissidence begins to find its harmonic expression. The physical body returns to a place of wholeness and well-being for at the cellular level that, that vibration of being is in harmonic al alignment with spirit. That intelligence that guides the universe is the same wisdom that guides my life. It is the same intelligence that guides our nation. In this time of political tension, there is an easing 
We begin to look upon what love does. We begin to look upon success of good. We begin to look upon the blessings and the grace of individuals who stood strong in their belief, willing to be defiant of that, of that which did not support the magnificent expression of God's love because there was enough trust, single-mindedness, and that inner call of being. And as each of us lives in such harmony, healing happens in our world of affairs, in our body, in our relationships. We come from a deeper place of integrity and honesty. We come from a, a greater expression of caring and compassion. Believing now is the time that healing unfolds. And so we hold dear in our heart, our nation at this time with the passing of a Supreme Court Justice who represented so much of, of what was good. And that my mind will not go to fear with that sense of void, but know that she was the stepping stone of that even greater expression that is stepping into that seat to help lead this great nation that has been called into expression for humanity at this time. There is that seed that is stirring, that is seeking to express itself and to flourish into the fullness. I trust the full presence of God in this moment. I find peace in that. I remain loyal to that. For I know with love all things are possible. So grateful to know that Seaside stands on that loving foundation of love. It is not guided by the contagion of fear, but is called by the vision of love. That every member of this family is blessed by that frequency that transcends time and space. That love, that abundance, that health, that well-being, that joyous expression dissolves all dissonance within the home and life. And there is an emanating ripple moving forth. God's good is now, and I'm grateful to see it, to proclaim it. I find peace. I am peace. I live peace. I bring peace. I am love. I bring love. I live love. In the face of all things, this free spirit cannot be contained. I have been called for times such as this, just as each and every one of us has been called to stand in a bold way. Grateful that good is happening, that we have been activated and are being used by spirit to bring love. We find peace in that. We're loyal and committed to that. And we honor that wild spirit is willing to do that, no matter what. So I let go. I trust. I believe. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. I did it all. The grace of God was sufficient. I didn't know the Now I can say if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you got to let go and this is what you have to say. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life.
<laughs> I love it, I love it. Hey, our affirmation for the week is I honor my teachers by living the teachings of truth. Together, I honor my teachers by living the teachings of truth. Touch your heart, remember some of those teachers? I honor my teachers by living the teachings of truth. One more time, like it is your truth. I honor my teachers by living the teachings of truth. And our, uh, we love you. See you next week. Hey, summer's over. This is the last Sunday. Fall, wow. birds.